So I thought I would throw together this review of Inquisitor because the handful of reviews that are on YouTube are very, uh, very surface level. It's mostly people crying about the user interface, which I thought was perfectly fine anyway. I never had any issues with the user interface in Inquisitor. It's perfectly functional. The vast majority of the time you're going to spend in this game is in combat, and I would love that if the game were more complex. Unfortunately, it's just a real-time point-and-click game like Diablo and uh, you know Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, and so on. You're just going to be moving the cursor over the enemies, clicking, and that's it. That's all the combat in this game entails. And if you're a melee character, you just click once and uh, all the attacks are executed automatically after that. So it's a very simplistic game in terms of, you know, the human mechanical input. But the combat system is actually pretty interesting. It's somewhat well designed. It's not, uh, you know, it's not anything innovative, but it is interesting, you know. There are several different damage types, and of course... That means that you have to apply different spells to different enemies. Not really a, a whole lot to even discuss in terms of the combat. It's enjoyable. You know, it's simplistic, but it's enjoyable. And it is very difficult in the early game. Unless you just grind, you know, unless you just kill hundreds of weak enemies over and over to get experience points. Then the game, even early on, becomes somewhat easy. But I played the game on hard, and uh, I never had any real difficulty outside of the early game and a few dungeons here and there that were somewhat difficult. What really greatly disappointed me in regards to this game was that I was expecting it to be more open-ended than it was. It's an extremely linear game, and they also market this as a game in which you're going to be persecuting heretics, but there's not really a whole lot of that. Probably like 95% of your time within this game is going to be combat. There's very little choice and consequence, and uh, you know, ev almost every single quest has an optimal outcome, so there's really no reason to side with the forces of evil in really any quest, because it's the suboptimal outcome. So yeah, there really is no choice, you're just going to be choosing you know, the faith option, the morally correct option every time to get the optimal outcome. And every single heretic you're going to persecute really is part of the main quest. There are very few NPCs in this game that are, you know, exclusively optional content. Almost every single quest in this game is more or less mandatory to complete the main quest. Or, uh, you know, the things you need to complete the side quest are on the way to some aspect of the main quest. I mean, everything is so interconnected that it really feels like everything is mandatory. So, yeah, there's really no side content, and there's just no choice and consequence. And the main story is so linear, it's it's crazy. There are no alternate paths through the game. Every single playthrough will be exactly the same in terms of, you know, where you're going to go, what you're going to do, who you're going to speak to, and so on. What's going to happen in the main story. And that's unfortunate because... I thought it was going to be a more open-ended game in which I have free reign to accuse people and in which I have free reign to really do whatever. I thought it was going to be, you know, just more open-ended. I, I don't know what I was really expecting. I can't really think... There aren't too many games that are truly open-ended, so it's hard to even think of a a comparable game to what I was thinking of. I guess Temple of Elemental Evil is pretty open-ended. And I wasn't necessarily expecting the game to be as open-ended as Temple of Elemental Evil, but I, I thought it would be more open-ended than it is. I mean, this game is just as linear as Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Planescape Torment, and so on. It's really unfortunate that they didn't spend more time developing side quests, which are disconnected from the main story, side quests in which you can independently uncover heretics and accuse them, or they should have thrown some random encounters into the game too, that would have been cool. But yeah, I mean, every single location in the game is in some way tied to the main story, and all the side quests more or less tie into the main story. Many of the so-called side quests are really mandatory. I would have really appreciated a couple dozen quests which are mostly talking, mostly investigative. Quests which require the player to actually think. Some logic puzzle side quests, you know what I mean? Some dialogue-based logic puzzles. Figure out who's actually guilty. Try to deduce what's going on in this situation. I would have appreciated a couple dozen side quests of that nature. 
Now, I love games that are mostly combat, but this game is so long, and it was also billed as a game, at least you know, from the website that I saw, you know, the marketing material that I saw, I thought it was going to be a more open-ended game in which you're investigating cases of heresy, but that's a very, very small part of the game. The vast majority of the game is just like Diablo, which would be fine if I knew what it was going into it, but having expectations which differ from what you actually receive, obviously, it's just, uh, it's disheartening, you know? Go on to the subjective aspects of the game now. I think the game looked amazing. Uh, the color, the texture quality is pretty good, and just the art style looks very good. The UI, all of the UI elements look great, although I wish that they were bigger. They should have made the icons on the UI larger than they are. Soundtrack was pretty good. All of it was appropriate. It's all, you know, old music. It's all organ music. It all fits in to the setting. The story was interesting. There are some twists in there you may not see coming. And uh, the ending was especially good. I won't spoil it, of course, but uh, I'll say that the ending was extremely appropriate. And uh, I was really surprised at how how well the ending fit into the story how well the ending fit into what's going on. It's an ending that really makes me wish that this game had a sequel, I'll say that. That's how high quality the ending is. I'm actually lamenting the fact now that there isn't a sequel to this game, because I would play it, you know. I would play it, even if it's a 200-hour game, where it's 95% combat, I would play it. Overall, it's a good game. If you like uh, point-and-click, real-time combat games, you know, like Diablo and uh, all the Infinity Engine Dungeons and Dragons games, then uh, you'll enjoy it, probably. Don't go into this game expecting it to be a game with a bunch of side quests and choice and consequence. Don't expect it to be an open-ended game, because that's not what it is. It's basically a very linear dungeon crawler, just like Diablo. So if you go into this game expecting, you know, a medieval Christian Diablo, then you'll be very pleased with it. Before I conclude this review, I, I do feel I should say this. One big demerit of this game, and really the vast majority of these uh, real-time point-and-click combat games, you know, like Planescape, Torment, Diablo, Baldur's Gate, and so on, is that the vast majority of combat encounters by the mid to late game, and in this game, even in the early game, have a single solution. Now, I was playing as a spellcaster, you know, the priest class, on the hard difficulty, and I only had to use the same, like, four or five spells for every single combat encounter th throughout the entire game. For the early game, I was just using the same spell. For the mid-game, I started using two spells in conjunction with one another, and for the late game, like, the final 20 hours, I was using the same spell over and over for every single enemy in the game, with only a handful of exceptions. So, yeah, the game, it's extremely simplistic in terms of the combat, but that's something, you know, that's a problem that's applicable to all these games, unfortunately. It's really difficult to develop a complex combat system per game where the only mechanical input required of the player is to move the cursor and click. You know, when that's all the mechanical input required of the player, it's a bit different to develop a complex combat system based upon that, you know? It's not like Die by the Sword or uh, Arx Fatalis or Severance Blade of Darkness, you know? It's not like those games where complex mechanical inputs are required within combat and therefore you can develop a more complicated combat system to match the more complicated inputs required. When you're just pointing and clicking, as I said, it's obviously difficult to develop a robust mechanical system for that. And that's the real downfall of really all these games, all these real-time point-and-click combat games. But anyway, overall, it was a good game. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it, especially if, as, as I said, you like Diablo and uh, Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, and so on. 